Okay. So here are the pieces that you're going to need for the lid. For the chipboard, you're going to need an 8 and 3 quarter by 6 and 7 eighths. And again, this is the top or the lid. You're going to need, and the lip of the lid is one and a half inches. You're going to need two six and seven eighths by one and a half. They're going to go on the end. So they should be, no, that should be seven, sorry. They should be slightly larger than this piece. So, sorry, that should be seven. That was hard to write upside down. So, as you can see, it's just slightly larger. And then these two pieces should be exactly the same width. So when you put them side by side, they're gonna snug in there real well, like so. So basically the hang, what's hanging over on the side pieces is covering the edge of the long pieces. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'll go over that one more time. Two of these at seven by one and a half, two of these at eight and three quarter by one and a half, and then you're gonna have an eight and three quarter by six and seven eight inch lid. Okay. All right. So now we're ready to put these together. And we're gonna basically, we're gonna do, so what I did is I actually glued, the, glued this all together. Three, I have to think about that again. Three out of the four sides actually get glued together. One um, is going to be uh, un is going to be a hinge. So I went ahead and glued it together, and I'll show you um, by just running a bead of glue and then holding this in, in place, like so. So actually, what I would recommend is doing the long pieces first because they're exactly the right length, and then gluing your end piece on. Okay, and then we'll cover it. And this is going. All of the pieces are going on the outside edge. They're not going on top of the chipboard. We need that extra width. So we're going to run a bead of glue right here on the edge of the chipboard. And this takes some patience. So if you're not up for it, set it aside and come back to this because uh, it does take a few minutes for the glue to dry. And you have to kind of hold it in place. Um, so that it's kind of a uh, square. I don't have box making tools so I'm just doing this by hand I don't have you know corner keepers or anything to hold this stuff in place so I'm just doing it by hand and it is a little messy I'm going to set it down hold it in place and then I'm going to clean up my workspace flip it over and do the other side so a good clean cut goes a long way to helping you get this attached to the side of the box now it don't worry, it's going to feel a little flimsy, but we're going to solve that by the way we wrap it, which is going to reinforce all of this. Okay, so I'm just making sure everything is flush, flush. We're going to hold that in place for a few minutes and let it dry so that it's at least tacky. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to go away for five minutes or so, and then we're going to do this side. Okay, I gave it a few minutes, and now I'm ready to glue this side, and I'll just show you what I've got here. I went ahead and ran a bead down um, on the seam and then just pushed it in with my spatula, so that's done. So now we're ready to add some glue to this side. Just be careful. Um, if you're a little more patient than me you might want to even wait a, an hour or so before you do the, the next side but I, I don't have time for that <laughs> so this to me is the hardest part of the whole thing is getting the glue just on the edge and it's a little messy and then I decided instead of doing it against my um, cutting board I put a piece of paper down and um, you can always add more glue after it's connected. Don't go too heavy, otherwise it'll take too long to dry. A good clean cut, again, goes a long way to helping you join the two sides. Okay, now as I mentioned the first time, this should go flat on this surface and it should be equal, it should not exceed the edge of 
this panel. So it should be top to bottom, exactly the same height and width. I mean, if you're a fraction off, it's fine, but it basically it's gonna be the same, same length as your top. Okay, now I can tell you I did not get a very good clean cut on this, so I'm gonna hold this a little bit longer. And then once we get this last piece in, that's gonna go a long way to helping to stabilize um, this construction. So I'm just gonna hang on to this for a little bit. It's gonna be a little boring to watch, but I can tell it wants to bow out. So I'm needing to keep uh, pressure on it for contact points. Again, I'm gonna hang on to this for a little while I'll run a bead down it and then also let that dry and then when we come back, we'll do the edge. So I'll be back shortly. Okay guys, now we're ready to put on the third side. And <clears throat> again, uh, exercise patience. If you don't feel it's dry enough, um, give it some more time. I'm gonna do this third side and then I'm gonna set the whole thing aside and we're gonna build the page for the book and the hinge. Um, while we're waiting for this to dry. And this needs to be good and dry before you try um, to wrap it. <clears throat> because you have to um, maneuver the box, the lid quite a bit to get it completely wrapped and you don't wanna break your seams in the process. So we're gonna set it aside for a good while after I get the third side on. Okay. There we go. And again, I'm using this paper to help me. <clears throat> I'm gonna lay it down. Now, this edge of the chipboard should be flush with um, the side of this piece, like so. Spend a second getting that to tack, and then I'm gonna come back across and do the same thing. Okay, now I'm gonna lift it up sooner rather than later so that I don't have to worry about that paper being stuck to it permanently. Okay, now that it's semi-tacked, I'm just pushing it into place. And then I actually think I'm gonna turn it on its edge so the weight of the box is gonna help push it into place. And I mean on this edge, okay? There we go, it's looking good. I'm gonna run a bead of glue, set it aside, and then we're gonna work on the hinge right now. I'm gonna use my spatula to make sure it's actually into the seam, because that's what I care about, and that there's no air gaps. Okay, that's that. We're gonna set that aside for now. Making sure everything looks square, it looks beautiful. Okay, set that aside. Set that aside. In a few minutes, we'll get started with this. I think it's dry enough, we can go ahead and get started. And then in addition to covering it, which we want to do all the covering before we attach it to uh, the piece that I just set aside because we don't want to be moving all of it around and it will take some uh, maneuvering to get this covered. Okay, I'll be back soon. Okay, let's get started. We are going to wrap this part of the box. Looks like most of my glue is dry. And um, I went ahead and put tape around the edges. And we're gonna have three sides that are fixed and one side that's gonna drop down. So let's set this aside for a second. The side that's gonna drop down is gonna be wrapped uh, much like uh, the inside of the box. So we're gonna do this and then we're gonna leave one side open to attach to the lid. <clears throat> and let's get started. So this is seven by one and a half, and 
Um, I've got a one inch frame around it. I've got some tape on the back. So we're just going to place this here and then wrap three of the four sides. <clears throat> and then leave one side <clears throat> to attach to the lid. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, I just drew a one inch line and a one inch line so I have some guide as to where to place this. Here we go. We're gonna miter the corners. Scissors. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so I didn't tell you the size of this, but like I said, it's just got a one inch around it. So it's three and a half. It was three and a half by nine. So I started with a three and a half by nine piece of paper. And so basically I just made sure I had an inch all the way around this piece right here. <clears throat> and you can have a little more if you want. I just find inch is a good, um, easy for me to work with <clears throat> in terms of trying to wrap it and it grabbing and all that jazz. some quarter inch tape on the the two edges here whoops that didn't want to tear <clears throat> some days I have better control of my hands than others I'm sure you guys all get that Okay, now we're gonna do three of the four sides. So we are going to leave this side uh, intact. It's going to be what attaches the cover, the lid to the spine. that back so I can wrap it. There we go. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to tuck the sides in. Okay. 
Okay. One more time. Oops, I wanted that to be pulled up. So we'll make sure, there we go. I'm gonna just leave that in place. Okay, so this strip is what we're going to use to adhere it. Um, uh, to the spine. Or, no, actually not to the spine, to the, um, the top of the box, like so. So this is actually gonna drop away. When you open the book, it's gonna drop down, okay? All right, so now we can set that aside and focus on wrapping this. So we're gonna start with, this is four inches by 11, four by 11, and then you're gonna score it in half. Yep. And then the way we're going to apply this is we're going to use that score line and then place it right on the top of the box like so, centered. And then you've got all this left on the inside. That's going to go down the inside. And then you've got this little flange that's going to wrap around the back. Okay. So what we want to do is get this centered on the box. So this is 11. This is 7. So we should have 2 inches on either side, roughly. So that's centered. Okay. Go ahead and remove our tape. I'm going to stand up to do this because the, the box is going to be upright. <clears throat> and we're going to take our 4 by 11 inch paper that's scored in half at 2. We're going to place the score line on the open end of the box, so the inside of the box. <clears throat> so you can straighten it out, get it roughly centered, fold it over on the score line, like so. Okay? And then press that all into place. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn it on its side and we are going to cut from the corner of the box out and from the edge of the box out. We're going to leave the side piece intact. And so the easiest way to do that is to take a straight edge and draw a line. here and here. So those lines are going to get cut. Okay. And I forgot to bring my um, cutter in here, so I'm going to go ahead and use a pair of scissors, but I would actually, I would have done this with um, a blade, but it's not in here at the moment. So I'm going to straighten that out a little. Okay, we're going to do the same thing on the back. Now these will fold around like so and then these are going to come down and cover the inside of the box okay so for now I just want to fold this down and then lay it down and then we're going to come and go ahead and fold this stuff down so that we can start to work with a little bit more level surface okay so I'm just going to crease that with my hands And this is why it's important that everything is dry because I'm pressing on this pretty hard. You don't want your box to fall apart at this point. Okay. You can use glue or tape and I'm gonna go ahead and use tape because I don't wanna wait, I'm impatient. I'm gonna use a quarter inch because it's pretty, pretty tight. Now we 
go. Let's see. <clears throat> Sorry, I know I'm going in and out of frame. It's just hard to hold everything. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue the top down, this, this piece, or not glue, but tape it down. And then I'm gonna miter these two corners just so there's a little less bulk. that's in place. So we've got tape on the bottom and tape on the sides. So that's starting to give this whole thing a little bit more shape. Okay. So now one of the things I want to do is I want to create kind of a, a crease line uh, on the, uh, on, so there's my score line, but I want to see how wide my chipboard is. So I'm trying to get like a emboss the edge of, of the paper so that I can see. There's my score line, and then there's the how, the width of the box itself. So I want to see that on both the sides and the end. <clears throat> and you'll see why in a second. <clears throat> so you can use your um, bone folder, your fingernails. Um, we're not trying to get it tucked in the corner just yet. We're just trying to get an idea of the width of the box. And this matters because as we go to wrap it and trim the corners, we want to make sure we leave enough paper to cover the width of this, okay? So that's looking pretty good. And I'm gonna lift it up and show you in just a second. <clears throat> okay, so you can see that there's like a little gusset here on both sides and even, if I get the light just right, even on the back here, okay? So now we're gonna trim away so that when we tuck it down, um, we don't have excess paper. So it's a little bit confusing, and I know it is because I went through this myself in building my prototype. Um, it's just not as straightforward as I want it to be, but after building this a couple of times, this gave me the best result. So it's a little fussy, but I like it. Okay, so now we're gonna fold that down. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is I wanna adhere this side here so that it stops wiggling around on us and then um, we can do the rest of the corner cut and, and then line the inside. So I'm not pulling it all the way off, just enough so that I can wrap this. In place, there we go. And then I'm gonna put those back down, just tear off what I don't need. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. This is the hard part because there's no real corners to deal with down here. So this is the fussiest part of the whole project. Okay, so now we've got that nice and wrapped. Okay, and it's not going anywhere. Okay. There we go. Okay, now Trying to think of which one I want tucked in. Okay, 
So basically what we want to do is we want to create a, a little mark here in the corner that's kind of in a mitered fashion on where the edge of this box is, the edge of the lip, right? And then we're going to cut slightly into the bottom piece, and I'm going to show it to you in a second. Up close, I mean. So I created a little slit on either side in a miter. I'm gonna tuck this down. That's gonna allow it to come down over the edge. And we're gonna push that into place. And you're gonna see you have excess that's gonna come around the side and that's on purpose. Because we're gonna trim this one down so that it fits perfect. And the bottom one is gonna wrap slightly and then it'll cover the corner. I'll show you cool. do that in just a second. This is a little difficult because the cardstock is thick. <clears throat> I'm going to take a sliver off. Just a tiny bit. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to use my bone folder and try to push everything in place. And we're going to look at it. Let's see how we did. So now that's ready to go. And so I was just taking in and out and, and testing it until I got this to go in smooth. Now I'm ready to, in this case, glue it into place, okay? And you can see there's my little slight mitered corner, and that's what's gonna make sure that our chipboard is covered. And like I said, it is fussy, but it does give the best result. So I'm gonna put glue on the back, and then we're going to push it all into place. Okay, and now we have Our side is lined, the top of the box is lined. So when we're finished, we'll just be able to set a, a decorative piece inside. Okay, so this is the last piece. And we are going, that's too big, I need my small scissors. We're going to cut basically the width, so I'm, I created a little embossing mark, that's the mark I'm gonna trim off to. and clean that looks so we'll glue that down so we're going to do the same thing so I'm going to lay this down 
And then I'm gonna use my fingernail to emboss where the edge of the, the lid is, the width of the chipboard. And you can see I'm gonna cut from that down to the edge of the box. And I'm not cutting a straight line, I'm cutting it at a slight angle. And then I'm gonna test it. I need to cut a little more, it's a little too tight. Beautiful, that's it. Okay, so we're gonna burnish these into place with my bone folder and then get uh, some glue on these and get them placed. So you should have some nice crisp lines. Okay, let's get some glue down. <clears throat> Now you can see with this method, first of all, I think the corners turn out really crisp and beautiful. <clears throat> and like I said, I will put a link to the guy's channel that um, I learned this technique from. I think if you use uh, thinner paper, it's even easier. I think part of the challenge with this, it's not, it's tedious, but um, because we're using paper that's um, heavy to wrap a box with, if we were using say 35, 30 pound, 30, paper, it would be much easier to get into these corners. Um, but I still, I'm very happy with the result. I think it's better than the other ones that I mocked up. <clears throat> okay. And it's these two corners. If you did a closed box, you'd do it again on the other two corners, but this is going to be an open panel, so we don't have to go through this corner uh, process again on um, this box. Okay. Now, I didn't attach these and I left these out on purpose because I'm going to miter the corner. I'm just gonna freehand it. And I just think when we glue it down, it, it's a much cleaner look uh, when we go to put our designer paper on top. Okay, looks beautiful. So you're going to use a combination of tape and glue. Tape is always my preferred, um, but you just can't get into some of the places with tape um, and have the control you need. So I'm doing both. Okay, so there we go. Now the next thing we're going to do is finish covering the sides. And this is going to be very straightforward because we're just going to um, push it into place on both and then we're going to trim the end off and wrap it around. So it'll be very straightforward, okay? So again, we're gonna remove the tape. So my, I'm going back and forth on whether I, I wanna just butt it up against this um, or overlap it slightly. And I think I will overlap it slightly. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue right here. And I'm doing glue because I don't want the width of the tape on there. So I'm gonna put a bead of glue right here on the black and then I'm gonna lay, um, my strip down. Now I, these strips don't need to be as long but they're going to be the same width. So they're four inches scored in half at two and I think they're, I started with eight and a half but we are going to trim the end off. So I'm going to put a little bead of glue here and we're going to overlap it just slightly. And I'm resting the scored edge on on the lip of the box, okay? Pretty straightforward, huh? Okay, now we're gonna wrap that around the back. Fold it down gently. 
And again, all of this is really reinforcing the box lid. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and put down a quarter inch strip of tape here, and we're gonna um, fasten this side down. And then we'll work on the inside. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and put a strip down over here because I know I'm going to use it. Okay, there we go. This could be done with glue too, if you'd rather. Oh, I meant to, before I did that, we were supposed to cut this edge. So I'm just gonna do it freehand. There we go. But since this side's not cut, I'm gonna draw a line and we're gonna trim it. So if before I taped it down, we should have drawn a line on both sides and you're gonna trim it down just to the edge of the box. And that way it starts to fold around. So that's how we're gonna finish this edge of the box, but we don't have to deal with the lid, okay? All right, now we're ready to do the other side. <clears throat> and this time I will put it down without uh, taping it to the back until we trim it. <clears throat> and the only reason I'm doing this in pieces is I didn't have a big enough piece of paper to go all the way around the edge. My guess is you won't either because the 12 by 12 won't do it. So I used um, eight and a half by 11s and pieced it all together. Um, but if you have a large enough piece of paper, that's ideal, right? Okay, remember the score line's gonna go on the open edge of the box. I'm gonna put a bead of glue here at the join. <clears throat> So I'm gonna turn it around because I can't see where it's landing. There we go. So I'm resting the score line on the top of the box and pressing it into place. <clears throat> okay. I'm using my finger on the inside to press back against because you don't wanna to be too hard on your box possible you could break your seams. Okay, now I haven't, it's hard to see around, but I haven't uh, taped this part down. I'm going to trim um, both sides. <clears throat> Okay, one, use the one ruler and then put a, a line on either side. Again, there's my lines on either side. And I'm just going to cut from the edge to the box. Now, because we've trimmed those two pieces, it allows us to come around the edge. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape down this flange. <clears throat> okay, we're making good progress. So now I'm just pressing, pinching it down, pressing down. I'm gonna use my bone folder to get into the corner. And 
as you can see, this is much easier. <laughs> You're not dealing with the corner. And then, of course, this is just going to come around and wrap. <clears throat> We're going to lift this up. These are going to come down. I'm just using my fingers to score the edges. Now, this is a lot of excess that we don't need because this is going to come down and cover everything. So, I am going to cut away some of what's left here. Being careful to make sure that I cover this edge. <clears throat> so one thing we can do is we can miter this edge because that's going to happen. Just like we did on these corners, I just mitered them so it'll lay down a little more smoothly. Okay, that's done. <clears throat> take a break because I'm feeling a little fatigued and I got to think about this last part. Um, I was so focused on getting the corners in that I think I've got to go look at um, a video again and refresh my memory on how to cover the sides without having too much excess. I'll be right back. Okay, I went back and I kind of got a refresh on what we're going to do. And so um, we're going to do a couple things. We're just going to tuck that in out of the way. We're not ready to glue those down. We're actually going to come around the side first. And so I don't have any clips handy here. So one of the things I want to do is trim both of these pieces down to one inch. So I just laid my ruler down and put a, a quick mark at one inch. So it's, it's going to hang past the edge of the box at one inch. And I'm just going to trim that off by hand. And it's just because we don't need all that excess. Um, so we're going to do both sides at one inch. Okay. There we go. I'm going to make sure the camera's actually rolling, and it is. Okay, so the next thing um, we're going to do is we're going to um, create some, some, some lines to further trim, oh, I need to turn the light on, further trim this down. <clears throat> so, gosh, it's so hard to see. So right here, I'm gonna lay that flat, and then um, this was actually up here and I trimmed it off, and I did that, and I left a little tab on it, so that when we come around, this tab is gonna, is gonna fit right in there. So I'm going to cut, this is really hard to show you. So there's the little tab that's left, and it's about the width of the top. So I'm going to trim this. Right there, okay? So now this can wrap around on the inside, and then this is going to go on the top of the black right there. Now, I figured that out before I trimmed this one, but you'll see there's a teeny tiny bit of um, black. So the way I just trimmed the second side you'll have this tab to go over the black so it won't expose any of the chipboard. On this side, I'm going to blacken it in with my Sharpie because I over trimmed it. And it's just gonna be a teeny tiny corner that is gonna show, okay? <clears throat> so ideally, the, these would both look the same. This is gonna come around and actually be glued on the top, and this is gonna get glued to the inside. So we still need to trim the bottom. And I am going to use my fingernail to kind of do a miter mark in both corners. 
from the corner to the center. And then we're gonna trim from the edge to that sort of mitered corner, which can you see it? Um, it's very difficult in this light, but I just used my fingernail to emboss it. I'm gonna trim that so that it's wide enough to cover the chipboard here when I lay it down and then this will swing around to the inside, okay? And um, it doesn't really need to curl over. We're gonna put another piece here anyway. But again, I use my fingernail to create kind of a miter point and then you wanna cut it essentially the width of the chipboard. That's going to come around the side, and then this is going to get glued down. So that's the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually glue the sides down, then the bottom, and then this is going to come over and clean up the top for us. Okay. I hope you guys are all still with me. <laughs> I um, I know this is not a very smooth project, but like I said, I'm learning sort of as I go to. Um, there's other ways to cover a box, but like I said, I think this one gave the best, the cleanest finished product. So it's a little bit of work, but I, I think it's worth it. Okay, so I just wrapped that edge. And again, because a little bit of this chipboard is gonna show because of my poor planning, just hitting it with my Sharpie, and then this is gonna come down but we're first gonna do the other side. We're gonna glue this little strip down first. And by the way, it doesn't need to be the full length. It just needs to cover that corner, so I'll get rid of some of that excess. Got a little too much glue on there. come around the edge like so glue that in okay and then the last part is we're going to come around and glue this piece down on both sides. That's not really the last, it's the nearer to the last. Okay. Okay, so I've got that in. I'm gonna use my bone folder to snug it up into the corners. And actually, so there's the one that has a little bit of the corner showing, and it, it came out beautifully. So if you cut that strip a little too small, don't worry about it. Hit it with some um, Sharpie, and you'll be fine. This is so rigid now, it feels beautiful. Okay, now the last piece is we're gonna come around the sides like so. <laughs> I gotta go let my dog out, she's crying. Okay, that's gonna go down and like so. Same thing on this side. OK, 
Okay, we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. Clean up my extra glue. Oops, that was, there we go. All right, and then the last piece is I'm gonna do something to cover this. But now whatever I do to cover it doesn't have to go all the way to the corners, right? We can just do across the center. So the last part of the lid, and I'm gonna let all this dry for a bit, is um, this hinge is going to get attached like so. So this is um, the drop part of the flap. The rest of this will go over the box. Um, and then this will be glued directly to the hinge and that'll be the last part of the construction of this box. So I need to do a little housekeeping, get everything organized. We'll apply this and then we're gonna um, add this whole thing to, um, to the rest of the box and we'll be, we'll be done. Okay, I'll be back soon, you guys. Okay, guys, we're gonna go ahead and add this um, last piece to the lid. And again, this is not gonna be fixed, it's gonna be loose. So it, um, that's why we only applied uh, three of the four sides. And I'm gonna add some glue to give myself a little bit of time to wiggle it into, into place. We're getting very close um, to wrapping this up. Okay. Oh, so. Lovely, lovely. Now we're gonna bring our box back in. We're gonna fold up our sides and we're gonna put the lid on top and I'm gonna let it dry a little bit. <clears throat> Just a minute, babe. There we go. Okay, so it's gonna go together like this. <clears throat> and then this last piece, shh, this flange is actually gonna get glued to the hinge. So it looks like a box lid, but when we're done, we're gonna open it up and it'll, it'll fall down just like that. So that's what it's gonna look like when it's finished. So I'm gonna let this uh, flange dry. I'm gonna go see what my dog needs. <laughs> when we get back, we're gonna attach um, the lid to the actual, um, what's going to be the spine. And then we'll go ahead and add our, um, our hinge and then then it'll be time to start decorating this okay I just realized I still need to put the strip like I did here so I don't really need the designer paper right now we're gonna cut um, a strip and score it in in half and then we're gonna lay it right there that's that's what was missing and then we're gonna glue it all together so I did I think two inches is that what I did yeah two inches score in half and we're going to measure it to fit. <clears throat> okay, we'll score this in half, and then we're going to lay it down right there. where I did. I'm going to take, here it is. Here it is. 
Okay, this is five eighths, and then I'm also gonna put a quarter inch strip, just like I did the others. So it's four inches wide, or sorry, two inches wide, you're gonna score it in half, and, um, and then measure the distance. All we're trying to do is cover all this chipboard and then reinforce the hinge area. It needs to fit inside, so I just trim that a little bit. First one was kind of a mess. Okay. Okay. Take off the tape backing. Okay, and then we're just gonna Burnish that into place. Okay, there we go. Now we're ready to add it to the box. Okay, so I closed the box all the way, I'm gonna put the lid on. I'm gonna show you why I'm doing that as soon as I get it in place. Put the lid on, close that flap, and then I put this flap down and drew a line because that's basically where this, is, this piece is gonna get adhered to this box. So, <clears throat> we are going to center this and I put a little tick mark on both sides once I figured out how far it's gonna land. And that's basically where it needs to go. So we need to be able to center it and the box lid needs to be able to come up completely. Okay, so we're gonna put glue on this side. The line's gonna help me keep the glue in the right place. And again, I've got two tick marks to help me figure out where to go. And then I'm centering it uh, side to side. So once I have it down, the next thing I wanna do, oops, make sure it's centered, but I wanna pull this up and make sure it's gonna go flush. Okay, and it's, it is. Okay, so that is in place. So I'm gonna put some weight on this. And I don't have a whole lot of things that are heavy and we're just gonna let that dry. And then once it's completely dry, I'll close up the box so you can see the finished product and I'll open it up so you can see the way that the, um, the way it operates. And then it's time to decorate. Okay, back soon. Now let's focus on the hinge. So let me tell you, this is a little different than previous ones because we're going to actually have six pocket pages. And I'm leaving a little flange on either side, but I'm not sure I'm going to need it since I've not built a book and an uh, album in a box yet. I may actually wind up trimming a half inch off, so you have to bear with me. I'll see what how that works out <clears throat> when we go to apply it to the book. Okay, so... 
Let me tell you. I, I wrote down where to score, but I didn't write down what size paper. I think I started with... I don't know what I started with. It looks like 10. I think I wrote it down and then... You know what? We're going to have to do it together because I didn't write it down. So I'm going to start with a piece of paper that's 11 inches as soon as I can get my hands on one. Okay, so it's 11 inches across. And it needs to be trimmed down so that the pocket page will slide right over it. So the pockets are six inches. So this needs to be five and seven eighths. Okay, so it's five and seven eighths by 11. And then we are gonna start I didn't bring my score tool in. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. We're gonna have 18 score lines. So I always start from the middle and work my way out. Um, so you'll have nine score lines to the left and nine to the right. And I forgot my score tool, be right back. Okay, everybody, we're ready to add the hinge and after looking at kind of what's going on here and knowing that I want this to kind of fall freely, I've decided that I am going to trim this out so that it's not going to cross um, this hinge area on either side. Um, I think it'll just operate more smoothly. So I'm going to lay it in and then I'm going to use my pencil and mark the edges and then I'm going to set the hinge into my trimmer and, and trim it off. Okay. No, I'll stop that. Sorry, my dog uh, feels like she needs to dig into my carpet for some reason. She found a sunny spot. She thinks she needs to nest. Okay, so I, I like to lay my hinges down like this because then I know I've got a half inch on um, either side, which is what we need. So it looks like that's going to be pretty straightforward. So I'm going to lay this in my trimmer. And I'm going to trim off that. And so I'm just going to lay the hinge down, put a pencil mark on either side, and that's my trim line. I just wanted to verify that that was going to fit um, by looking at it on here, and it looks like it will. So just a tick mark on either side, trim that off, and we're going to test it one more time. And if it doesn't fit in your trimmer, you can also just use a ruler and an X-Acto knife craft knife to trim it. Okay, let's see how we did. Oop, I think I need to cut a little more off. Yeah, so I can see that. A little bit more. Okay, we're almost there. Okay, one more test. See how we did? Oh, it looks like I need to cut off a little bit more. Um, so I want to make sure that I'm completely clear of the hinge area because otherwise it's going to want to buckle and push the hinge back up. So now that I've got it laid in here, that side's going to be fine. So it's this side I want to trim kind of a challenge holding it and marking it at the same time. I want to hold it with the same hand I want to write with. <laughs> okay, let's just push that down. I'm going to mark it right about there. Hopefully that's the last time I have to pull out of the screen. Okay, I think we're okay. So now the next thing we need to do is cover the whole back with um, score tape and then we're gonna lay it down. And again, the reason I was holding off on doing that is I wanted um, to make sure, I didn't wanna put a bunch of tape on it and trim, trim it off. The last time I cleaned my um, 
craft mat, I, I laid it down upside down. It's driving me nuts. But there's just too much stuff on my table to, to deal with it right now. So I'll make it work. been an interesting project um, it's a challenge challenge for sure I, I am gonna have the cut list down below um, but also I'm gonna add a link to a resource that I relied on heavily um, shoot I hate it when that happens I should use my my tape tear tool um, on how on some of the methods that I used for this book um, a guy his first name is sage and I think it's his name. I don't know. It's a YouTube channel, so you never know if it's somebody's real name or not. Um, but he he does some amazing work, and I was really impressed. Um, his videos, some of them are hard, difficult to watch because the camera's coming at an angle instead of straight down, so you don't always see the paper. You see his hands sometimes. But he does beautiful work, and he's not an album builder. He's a box builder. So that was kind of uh, what I decided to do. When I looked at lots of the other um, paper crafters that had done some explosion boxes, um, I, well, a lot of them are just done with um, cardstock and not with chipboard. Um, but I decided that I really wanted it to look, you know, like a box. Um, so, so I spent my time there, and so I'll leave that uh, for you. It was, he wasn't easy to find, and that's why I want to make sure I give you guys a link. Um, a lot of times for, especially in the paper crafting, if you just search, you know, explosion box, you're going to get thousands, well, not thousands, hundreds of videos um, from different designers. I left a little gap here, and I'm going to make sure it's covered with tape. Um and different techniques that paper crafters use, which is slightly different from um, what they call cartonage. Um, and I think I'm pronouncing that right, which is box making and box covering. Um, anyway, so I learned a lot. I spent a lot of time watching his videos um, and getting ideas. I'm just gonna cover this with glue because I got just that little gap and this is the hinge. You never want to have a gap. You want adhesion across the whole back. Okay, in my space, let's bring this down. So the goal here is to center our hinge up and down, left and right, and, and be sure to steer clear of that hinge area. There we go. So there's our spine and our pages are gonna get attached here and it's all gonna close. So this is the top of the box and this is the bottom of the box. So the last thing I'm gonna do on this video is uh, we're gonna build the pocket page. And I actually did it offline and I thought I was recording and I wasn't. So we're gonna do that together real quick. So we're gonna take two sheets of paper. We're gonna trim them down to um, six and a half inches. So this is six and a half by eight. Sorry, six and a half by eight and a half. Okay, we're gonna score a half inch on the six and a half inch side. And you're gonna do this six times, but we're gonna do it, I'm gonna do it one time. So we're gonna score at half inch. Okay, 
for both. And we're gonna apply score tape to that half inch. Here it is, five eighths, or three eighths. Now, when we're finished, we want a six by eight. So, because we're scoring a half inch, that makes this, that takes it down to six inches from six and a half. I like to just start with a little bit, get my corner in, use that as a pivot point, line everything up, press it down, and then pull my tape. And the more you do this, the more confident you get, the faster you'll go. The second side's pretty easy because you've already got the hard work done. You're not holding two, two sheets in place, you really just closing this so that there's not a bubble in your pocket page. Okay, now this is six inches by eight and a half. I'm gonna take a quarter inch off either side and then I'm gonna know for sure I've got perfect right angles on my six by eight inch finished pocket page. And Putting effort into making sure you've got a good pocket page to start with will save you tons of time when you're measuring out the designer paper and the flaps that go on top. So that's it, you're gonna do that five more times because this is a six page pocket um, album. So that's it for this, this video. I'm gonna go ahead and get this information in and upload it. And then there'll be a part two, which is building the top of the box. I'll be back soon.